So this is a scoping hearing. Scoping is something that is done before the council takes action on any um, proposed measures that they're looking to changing. So this presentation is going to give you a little bit of background on why the council is considering what they're considering. Um, and, you know, obviously the, the purpose of the webinar is to give everybody a chance to comment on um, what the council is thinking and um, ask questions. So first, a little background on hogfish. An assessment was done in 2014 with information through 2012, and this was CDAR 37. Um, and, and I'm just going to go through this real quick, but I will give you some more detail about each of these um, bullet points a little bit further along in the presentation. So there were genetic studies that were done recently, uh, published in 2014, that indicated that the hogfish um, stock in the South Atlantic um, is actually genetically different uh, from Georgia, North Carolina, and then south. Um, so there are two separate stocks of hogfish in the South Atlantic, according to genetic evidence. So the stock assessment found that one of the two stocks, the one that is off of Florida, is overfished and is undergoing overfishing. When that happens, the council has to implement regulations to end overfishing and rebuild the stock. So that's one of the one of the things that they're looking at doing with this amendment. As I said, uh, there's recent evidence pointing to the fact that there are two um, genetically different stocks, um, Georgia through North Carolina, and it will be indicated um, as you see on your screen throughout the presentation. And then the other stock is the Florida Keys and East Florida stock. Uh, for the Georgia North Carolina stock, the status is unknown, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And for the Florida Keys East Florida stock, um, as I said, it is currently overfished and undergoing overfishing. So, a little bit more about the Georgia North Carolina stock. Um, the Council's um, Scientific and Statistical Committee reviewed the CDAR 37 assessment, as they do all the assessments and they did not find it adequate for managing um, this stock. They stated um, that a statistical catch at age model, uh, which is what was conducted, was not the appropriate tool, not the appropriate modeling framework to analyze the available data for that stock. And so therefore, they did not think that it was appropriate to um, manage that stock and it was not considered the best available science. So the SSC recommended that instead of using um, the results of the stock assessment, that for that particular stock, the Georgia and North Carolina, that, it, that the um, recommendations be developed as far as catch levels using the only reliable catch stocks approach. And I will tell you about that approach in, in just a second. And this is an approach that's been used for other species um, that lack a stock assessment. So this is for species that have only um, reliable catch information. Um, and this is part of the ABC control rule that's been approved uh, for South Atlantic stocks. So the ORCS approach, um, and as I said, it, it stands for only reliable catch stocks, is used to calculate the ABC um, for stocks that don't have a lot of information. So it involves um, selection of a catch statistic, which is a level of landings, then there's a number that denotes the risk of overexploitation for that particular species or stock. And then another number that denotes the risk of management, the, the risk level for that stock. So all those numbers get multiplied together, and I'll, and I'll show you in a minute how it was done for Hobbish. And then this provides um, an estimate of the acceptable biological catch. So the Scientific and Statistical Committee provides the first two criteria for each stock. So they look at the landings and they select a catch statistic. And then the council, and they also um, specify the risk of overexploitation for each stock. And then the council specifies the management risk. Um, and they did that for several unassessed snapper grouper species recently in Amendment 29. So here's how it was done for hogfish. Your risk of overexploitation based on the SSC's recommendation is considered to be moderately high. So that uh, corresponds to a value of 1.25.
then the catch statistic was selected to be the highest landings um, from 1999 through 2007 and that's that 32,182 pounds that you see on your screen and the risk tolerance that corresponds to a species that is under moderately high risk of overexploitation is 0.7. So you multiply all those things together and you arrive at the recommended ABC which is 28,161 pounds whole weight. This again is for the Georgia North Carolina stock of hogfish. For the Florida East Florida, uh, Florida Keys East Florida stock, the SSC did recommend using the CDR 37 assessment for managing uh, this stock. And the assessment indicated the stock is overfished, and you see there the ratio of current um, fishing mortality versus that under MSY is above one, which means the stock is overfished, and it is undergoing overfishing, and that's denoted by the ratio of the current spawning stock biomass over the minimum stock size threshold, and that's below one, which indicates an um, overfishing condition. So as I said earlier, when the stock is overfished, the council has two years to put in a rebuilding plan. So the amendment would do that for this particular um, stock. So here's what the amendment would do. It would, um, first of all, specify that there's now two stocks of hogfish and establish what the boundary would be between the Florida, East Florida, um, Florida Keys, East Florida stock and the West Florida stock, which is managed, um, it's, it's under the jurisdiction of the Gulf of Mexico. Fishery Management Council. Then the amendment would specify all the um, various benchmarks and fishing level recommendations, the maximum sustainable yield, the minimum stock size threshold, the acceptable biological catch, optimum yield, annual catch limits, the recreational annual catch target, and accountability measures for each of the two stocks. And then it would also establish or modify whatever management measures um, are appropriate. So that's what the following series of slides is going to cover. So there's quite a few actions. Um, and keep in mind that the language um, that I have used um, for this presentation, it's abbreviated, so it doesn't reflect the exact language that the council has approved. Um, so you can refer to your scoping document for the specific language. So action one deals with the fishery management unit. And so um, the, for this one, we actually have a preferred uh, when the councils, the South Atlantic Council and the Gulf of Mexico Council met together in June of this year, they discussed this issue and they um, have indicated that Shark Point, um, and I'll show you a map in a minute, on the Florida Southwest Coast should be used as um, the boundary to, to define, the separ to, to separate um, the two um, Florida stocks. And so the other choices were to use the South Atlantic Gulf of Mexico Council boundary or to use the Monroe Collier County line. And here's a map that shows um, where Shark Point is. If you can see my cursor, it's, it's over here. And so there would be a line drawn due west of that point. And then um, everything below that line would correspond to the South Atlantic Council and everything above that line would be managed by the Gulf of Mexico Council. Question two deals with establishing maximum sustainable yield. And so this table shows you the, um, the alternatives. No action, of course, um, is to do nothing. And right now the, um, the MSY is unknown for the for the stock of hogfish and it uses a proxy of F30% SPR. Alternative two would allow the council to adopt whatever gets produced for, for a stock assessment and make that be, um, use the MSY estimate from the model. So because uh, we don't have a stock assessment that can be used for the Georgia and North Carolina stock, the, um, the FMSY would remain at F30% SPR with an unknown MSY value. However, for the Florida Keys East Florida stock, we do have an estimate of FMSY from the model, and that's 0.138, which corresponds to an MSY of 346,095 pounds whole weight. So this action would allow the council to not only adopt that value as the, as the MSY, but as I said, 
to make sure that whenever there's an update to the assessment, the MSY value can just be adopted uh, without having to do a plan amendment. Action three addresses the minimum stock size threshold, uh, MSST. Currently, the definition um, to arrive at the MSST is to use the equation that you see on your screen, which is the spawning stock biomass at MSY times one minus M, M being the estimate of natural mortality, or half of that SSB MSY, whichever is greater. So for the Georgia, North Carolina stock, we don't know what that value is. Um, for Florida Keys East Florida, we do, and that would be 1,888,621. And then other alternatives that council can consider is to set the MSST at half of the SSB MSY. And you can see what the, the numbers that correspond to that on your screen. And uh, there is an estimate of, of natural mortality um, <coughs> of 1 0 .7, 0.179. Uh, another option is to establish the MSST at 75% of the SSB MSY. And this is something that council recently um, did for several stocks that have a low natural mortality. They actually, um, and then this was done to ensure that stocks such as those would not be constantly fluctuating between an overfished and a not overfished condition uh, because the natural mortality is low. And the range of natural mortalities that was considered in that amendment, and that was regulatory amendment 21, was from 0.08 to 0.23. So for hogfish, it would fall in that range. And so the council could um, decide to um, choose alternative three as their preferred. Action four addresses annual catch limits for the Georgia, North Carolina stock. And what you see on your screen is what's currently in place. So the ABC for the entire stock of hogfish right now is 137,824 pounds whole weight. The ACL um, has been set equal to the optimum yield and to the ABC. And then the allocations are 36.69% commercial and 63.31% recreational. So you see what those values correspond to on your screen. So the alternatives would be um, uh, to establish the ACL using recalculated allocations um, for each of the two stocks. So you would have to apply the same allocation formula that the council has used to arrive at the current allocations, but because you're splitting it up into two different areas, you have to recalculate the allocations. And so when you do that, um, it changes to 81.91% per, 81 commercial um, for Georgia, North Carolina, and 18.09% recreational. So then um, the subalternatives, as you see on your screen, are to set the ACL at the same level as the OI equal to the ABC or step it down a little bit to 95% of the ABC or 90% of the ABC. So the table shows you the corresponding values um, that would result for the commercial ACL and the recreational ACL. And there's an extra column on this table that shows the recreational ACL and numbers of fish, which is something the council requested um, in June. So to arrive at these numbers, we simply um, applied the average weight of a hogfish um, for that particular region to the recreational ACL in pounds. And we used, um, for this region, 9.99 um, pounds is the average weight. So that results in a recreational ACL, for example, under subalternative 2A of 510 fish. Okay, so moving on now, action five addresses um, the rebuilding plan for the um, Florida Keys East Florida stock. And this table shows you the various um, strategies that the council can choose from. And these come from different projections that were done um, from, you know, that were requested and, and recommended, um, some of them by the SSC. So the council has a range of alternatives to choose from for how they're going to rebuild this stock. So um, you have alternative two that um, uses 75% uh, of FMSY as the F rate strategy, which corresponds then to an F rate of 0 0.014. And then you have your year one ABC in pounds and the number of years that it's gonna take the stock to rebuild. 
and then the probability of rebuilding the stock. So those are the various columns of this table. Um, alternative two actually goes above uh, what is required under Magnuson. Magnuson requires that a stock be rebuilt in 10 years. So it, it's not um, an alternative that, I, um, that the council may be able to, to choose. So it actually may end up not staying in the amendment. Uh, and then alternative four corresponds to what the SSC has recommended. They uh, recommended that the ABC be set with a um, probability of rebuilding success of 72.5%. And then you have you know, other alternatives that they can choose from um, with different um, length of time that it would take to rebuild and different probabilities of, of success. Action six would then look at establishing the ACLs for the Florida Keys Florida stock. And this slide is a repeat of what I showed you before. It shows a no action on what's currently in place. And then um, you have several different combinations um, of alternatives. And so because the council hasn't yet picked a preferred rebuilding strategy for the previous action that I showed you, there are many possible scenarios for ACLs for this stock. And there's um, a series of tables, tables six through 10 in your scoping document that show you the values under each of the combinations of alternatives and subalternatives. But you know, just so you know what's under this one, they would be looking at um, the, the same sort of things that they've looked at before, stepping the ACL down from the ABC by 5% or by 10%. And then again, as I explained earlier, the allocations need to be recalculated um, based on the different uh, percentages because the stock is being split up into two. So for the Florida Keys, East Florida stock, um, the allocations for each sector would be 24.29% for the commercial sector and 75.71% to the recreational sector. So here's just an example of what the tables look like. As I said, there's four different tables that show you the various combinations. Um, this one corresponds to um, the recommendation from the SSC as far as the rebuilding strategy. So you see the different acceptable biological catch levels for each of the years. Um, and then under each subalternative, you have the recreational ACL in pounds, um, numbers, and then the commercial ACL. And for this stock, the average weight um, that was used to convert the recreational ACL in pounds to numbers of fish was 2.14 pounds. Um, action seven addresses a recreational annual catch target. Um, the ACTs are used in management to prevent ACLs from being exceeded. Uh, for fisheries that don't have in-season management um, to prevent the ACL from being exceeded, managers can use ACTs that are set below the ACL so that catches don't get up to that level. Um, so the, our council hasn't chosen to attach management measures to ACTs, but they still um, go ahead and specify them um, for all our managed species. And um, PSC stands for percent um, standard error, which is a measure of precision. So the larger your PSEs are, the less precise or uncertain your data are going to be. So you usually see very large PSEs for species that are infrequently encountered uh, in the recreational survey. Um, so things like snowy grouper and things like that are going to have very high PSEs. So that's just to orient you there a little bit. And so here's alternative two, and you have um, setting the ACT um, using the recreational ACL and then one minus the PSE, or just setting it at half of the ACL, whichever is greater. And you can see at the bottom of your slide, the average PSE for um, the Georgia and North Carolina stock of hogfish based on the last five years is quite high. It's 62.1%. Uh, then I'll turn to subalternative 2B, would we'll just set the ACT at 85% of the ACL and then 75% for subalternative 2C. So again, because the council doesn't have a preferred for the rebuilding strategy, um, 
we did not generate tables of values for all this because it would mean there's like 18 different combinations. Um, and so until the council selects a preferred, that's when we're going to generate um, the various values for the ACTs. And then alternative three um, does the same thing, but for the for the um, Florida Keys Florida stock. Um, these subalternatives are exactly the same. The PSC, however, for that stock is much lower, so it's only 20.5 percent. Then action eight. Um, this is where we get into um, now the management measures. So action eight looks at minimum size limits for both both sectors and both stocks. Right now, the minimum size limit for hogfish is 12 inches fork length for both sectors in federal and state waters off the coast of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. There is no minimum size limit in state waters of Georgia. Um, so the council has lots to choose from for this alternative, for this action. So um, there's alternative two to increase the minimum size limit for the Georgia, North Carolina stock of hogfish. And you have those various subalternatives. They range from 13 inches all the way to 20. And then there's another alternative that allows the council to do like a step, stepwise increase over time. Uh, and those values have not yet filled in, they've not been filled in because the council hasn't had a chance to discuss this yet. And alternative three is the exact same thing, but would be um, applicable to the Florida Keys, East Florida stock of, of hogfish. And just for illustration here, it, this is a length composition in inches of recreationally caught hogfish from 95 through 2012. Um, and the source should be CDAR 37. <laughs> so the black line uh, denotes the 12 inch size limit. So you can see the distribution there. Um, and I should mention also that the, um, the Snapper Group Advisory Panel has uh, made recommendations on several occasions um, that the council consider increasing the minimum size limit for hogfish um, so that they've been on board for a long time about that. Action 9 um, looks at commercial trip limits for both stocks. Uh, right now there's no trip limit and alternative 2 addresses trip limits for the Georgia North Carolina stock and we have a range that the council actually um, gave us in June of 250 pounds per trip all the way through 1,000 pounds per trip. And then alternative three is for the Florida Keys East Florida stock. And for this stock, the range uh, for the commercial trip limit uh, options is from 25 pounds per trip to 200 pounds per trip. So this shows you um, the distribution of hogfish harvested per trip in pounds by area from um, using data from the commercial logbook from 2012 to 2014. So you can see that the majority um, of trips are catching 25 pounds uh, for both of um, the stocks. And here's the breakdown. Um, by gear, so looking at hook and line, spear, and then other, which I believe the other category um, consists of landings that came from gill nets, traps, and if the gear was not provided. So by far the majority is going to be um, hook and line and um, spear fishing. So this shows you the, the expected percent decrease in landings for various trip limits for the Georgia North Carolina stock by the various gears uh, from the South Atlantic commercial logbook data again from 2012 through 2014. So you can see that under a trip limit of 250 pounds, the percent, the expected percent decrease in landings for spear would be 17 percent, for example. Um, so this gives you a little bit of a of an idea of what to expect. And then we have the same thing here for the Florida Keys, East Florida stock um, for the various trip limits that the council has um, selected. Action 10 um, looks at bag limits 
for both stocks. Uh, right now, the recreational bag limit is five fish per person per day off of Florida, and there's no recreational bag limit off North Carolina, South Carolina, or Georgia. So alternative two would modify the bag limit for Georgia and North Carolina stock. And then the council is considering um, a range from four fish per person per day to one fish per person per day. And then we also have an option that looks at one fish per vessel per day. And the same suite of alternatives would apply to the Florida Keys East Florida stock as well. And here um, is a figure showing you the distribution of hogfish har harvested per angler from the two recreational data sets, the MREP and the headboat, from 2012 to 2014. Um, and the reason that we have less than one, obviously people aren't catching less than one, but when you, um, the surveys record the number of fish and the number of anglers that were on a trip, and sometimes you have to you know, divide by the number of anglers, so you end up with portions of hogfish. So that's, if you're wondering, that's why we have less than one on the axis there. And here is a distribution um, of hogfish harvested per vessel from the two um, data sets as well, from 2012 to 2014. Um, so when you look at um, catch per vessel, it's going to show a much higher, um, a greater percent decrease um, because no matter how many anglers you have in a boat, the proposed bag limit of one hogfish per vessel would obviously only allow a single hogfish to be harvested on a trip. So then um, when you look at these percentages, you're going to see that the percent decrease for one per vessel is going to be quite high. Uh, but then it shows you the expected percent decrease for um, charter, private, and headboat for the uh, entire South Atlantic, and then we've broken it down by area for Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida Keys, East Florida. And again, this is using data from 2012 to 2014. So I, I should mention that um, the council is going to be um, looking at these preliminary analyses in more detail at their upcoming meeting in September. And some of the analyses that I'm showing you now um, have come in since the June meeting, so the council hasn't yet had a chance to, um, to discuss it. Then we have Action 11 um, that looks at commercial and recreational accountability measures for both of the stocks. Um, and this action is here because Amendment 34 to the FMP, which was recently approved, is making all of the accountability measures consistent. Um, it includes those for hogfish, and um, it's, it's making them all consistent across the board. But because Amendment 37 proposes splitting the stock into two, then we need to specify AMs for each of the stocks. Um, however, there's no changes to the actual accountability measures that are being proposed. So I didn't put them in the presentation, but they're included, as I said, uh, the language for all the alternatives. Um, if you would refer to your scoping document, that's, that's the language the council is going to be looking at in September. So that wraps up the summary for the actions. And here's just an overview of what we're expecting in terms of timing for this amendment. The council is going to review the comments um, that you provide today and everything we've received um, by a mail. Um, the comment period is open for another few days. So they'll look at those scoping comments and make whatever changes, um, narrow down the range of some of the alternatives that they're looking at. Um, then in December, they're going to review the document again, and by then it will have a lot more in the way of analysis. Um, so they can select preferred alternatives and then approve it for public hearings, which would then be held in January of 2016. Then in March, they would review those comments and make whatever changes are needed. And then in June, they would approve it for final review. Um, so then we expect that we would submit it to NIMS sometime in the summer of 2016 and that regulations would become effective the following year. And here's just, again, how to submit comments, um, mail, fax, email to Mike Collins with the subject line Amendment 37 scoping. Um, and please have those in by the 14th, uh, which is just four days from now. And if you have any questions, and some of you have already submitted them by email, and thank you for that, uh, you can always email me or call me. I'll be happy to chat with you.
So this is all I have for you today.